Colin, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad to have you here. Or All right, uh, thank you. Us here in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, second week in a row. That's right. Yes. Back for more. Yeah. So this, this class is going to be all about using healthy sauces. Uh, so uh, just a little bit about me before we get started. Uh, I have been vegan for 25 years. And boys who are 17 and 20, who are just about 18 and 21, still trying to wrap my brain around. But uh, they have always been vegan as well. So, uh, you know, sauces has really been a big part of that uh, for me, trying to get them to eat healthy food. Uh, you know, there were definitely times when, uh, you know, money was pretty tight and, uh, you know, what we were going to have for dinner a lot of times was, you know, what's in the pantry. So, uh, you know, we go in and you find, uh, you know, some can of weird beans or something. I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, you know, some kind of grain like farro that nobody's ever even heard of before. And uh, you have some quinoa and you don't know what to do with that. And, uh, you know, so then I would have to come home and, you know, look in the pantry and try and figure out, you know, what can I make with all of these random things, you know, maybe some kale from the CSA or something, uh, you know, trying to make something that my kids are going to eat. And if I could, if it was good enough that they asked for seconds, then that was a big win for me. So I've been developing these recipes over the years. I've been teaching at uh, cooking classes at a lot of libraries. Uh, throughout uh, Massachusetts and now New England. And uh, so, you know, we uh, usually get to eat in person and, you know, make these recipes and then get to hand out the samples to everybody so that you can all uh, try them uh, yourselves. But unfortunately, uh, you know, we have this, we have this different format for the time being. Uh, the benefit is, is that I get to eat all of the food myself. So I don't have to share. It's so nice. <laughs> Just kidding. I know. I love, I love being able to hand out the samples to everybody, uh, you know, just to get the feedback is really great. So uh, I teach a lot of classes. Also, uh, last year, the Healthy Vegan Cookbook uh, is my cookbook that was published. And uh, from vegan publishers, that is available on uh, Amazon. Uh, so if you just look up Healthy Vegan Cookbook and my name, Colin McCullough, then you should be able to find that. And you can uh, make Jeff Bezos a little bit richer. So uh, there's that, and uh, let's see, do you have any uh, questions or anything before we get started? Uh, the big question, so, or not so much a question, it's just uh, people say sauce makes everything better, so everybody's excited to learn about these sauces. It's all about it the sauce. It does. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, uh, in the cookbook, um, really one of the features of the cookbook is different sauce recipes. So I have 30 different sauce recipes. Uh, I like to have a lot of bowl meals for dinner, so just what I had tonight, actually, one of the recipes from the book. I had a green curry tofu uh, bowl meal with lots of green veggies and the uh, Thai curry sauce and uh, some tofu in there, so uh, it was fantastic. So um, I like to make a lot of these sauces be really utility sauces. So, you know, I have different uh, vegan cookbooks and, you know, Talk about sauces and bowl meals and they're you know very particular about you know exactly what you pair with other things you know just to have the right taste for everything but you know really like I said you know going back to the pantry so many so much of the times it was what do I have you know what do I have in the refrigerator what do I have in the pantry and certainly you know during these times so much of us are home and uh, you know there's a limitation on how much you can really go out to the grocery store so you know we're all kind of looking at our pantry saying okay uh, you know what is that and what do I do with it so hopefully these sauces are going to help you with that uh, there are a couple of easy sauces that we do uh, and then the last two are going to be a little bit more involved um, nice thing is with these sauces you can you know make a double batch they freeze really well now we'll you know we'll get into that a little bit more so even the ones that are a little bit more uh, complicated to make, then, you know, make a double batch um, and then freeze the rest that you don't use. So uh, before we get started, just want to point out, uh, I have a Vitamix, uh, which is a really like a high power blender. Vitamix is kind of an expensive ticket item to get. Uh, I believe they're around 350 starting at Target, um, but you can definitely get them used on uh, Craigslist, on eBay. Um, you know, you can have a couple of 
devices and appliances and whatnot, but for me, having a really powerful blender is the best investment uh, uh, to make for trying to make healthier food. Uh, you know, it just, the, it breaks everything down really well. You know, it makes a really creamy and smooth consistency of everything. Uh, so I wish I was paid by Vitamix to uh, constantly give them commercials, but uh, it's just because I've had one for a long time and I use it, you know, every day for smoothies and sauces and salad dressings and soups, so many different things. So, uh, you know, if you can get one, that's great. Um, if you have a, a Ninja, like a mid-level blender, like a Ninja or Nutra Bullet or something, that'll work too. That's fine. Um, it's just the uh, consistency is not going to be quite as smooth and creamy, but it'll definitely work. Um, if you use a regular blender, um, some of these sauce recipes when you're blending, you know, nuts and dates and things like that, then it's possible it's going to kind of uh, burn out the motor eventually. It's not really meant for that. So, uh, you know, if you have like the, you know, the 30 or $40 blender, then that might be something you want to spend a little money and upgrade that in order to be able to make these great sauces. So uh, first recipe we're going to do today is the lemon tahini sauce. So anyone who has been to Middle Eastern restaurants, uh, you know, has a good falafel sandwich or falafel pocket. Uh, this is the uh, sauce or similar to the sauce that they would use in uh, Mediterranean restaurants for that. And um, so again, as a uh, utility sauce goes over so many different things, you know, I love to have it on falafel, of course, as much as possible, but uh, you know, really uh, with a bowl meal of some beans and some rice and some veggies, it's so good. So uh, I'll show you how to make that. And also as we come across in these recipes, if there are any um, uh, more difficult to find ingredients, more specialty ingredients, and we can definitely talk about places you can get that. Fortunately, with the internet and Amazon and eBay, it makes uh, you know ordering some of the specialty ingredients so easy. So if you're not uh, interested in going into Whole Foods or something like that, then it's really easy to order the stuff online as well. So uh, lemon tahini sauce. First ingredient we're going to use is tahini. So we'll use one cup of that. Uh, tahini is ground uh, sesame seeds. So it's uh, kind of similar, I would say, in consistency to like uh, peanut butter. Um, so it's kind of thick, and uh, but it has kind of a unique taste. It's not a really strong tasting thing. Uh, the tahini, the taste of the tahini kind of sits in the background of uh, the sauce, but we use this as a base to help make the sauce really creamy. So put that in one cup of tahini. Uh, tahini, if you can't find that in a regular restaurant, then uh, there, it's easy to find in ethnic supermarkets, like um, uh, even uh, Indian and Asian supermarkets have it. Uh, Middle Eastern supermarkets, if you're near one, uh, you can, um, I get mine from uh, Trader Joe's sometimes. They sell it in little jars. Um, uh, you can get, um, that's something you can order online and get it in a big container as well. Just put it in the fridge, lasts a really long time. I'm going to put in a clove of garlic here. It's actually two cloves because mine are small. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of grated um, or powdered ginger, I should say. So put that in here. Also nice cooking. I don't have to use gloves. So. When I do classes, I have to be all prepared. All right, uh, two tablespoons of tahini. So I'm not gonna um, show it too closely because last night I did and it spilled everywhere. So technicalities. Tamari is, um, it's similar to soy sauce. Uh, it's very similar to soy sauce. Uh, tamari is, um, is a fermented soy product. Uh, so. Uh, natural sodium and uh, gives it a really rich deep flavor. You can just use uh, soy sauce if you wanted to instead of uh, the tamari, but I like to use straight tamari here. Let's pour that in. That's two tablespoons there. And let's see. Uh, we're going to put in the juice of one lemon, which I've already done ahead of time. Yeah, definitely want to get the seeds out uh, of the lemon. The, uh, Vitamix will blend it up, but it definitely makes it a little bit more sour. So 
Uh, also, we're going to put in uh, about a half a cup of water. So the amount of water that you put in uh, totally depends on how thick or thin you want the consistency of this. So if you want it thinner, just put in some more water there. Like that. All right, so I'm going to blend this for a minute. It's going to be a little bit loud. It's one of the great things about making smoothies for my boys in the morning is I don't even need an alarm clock. Just crank this thing nice and loud, and they wake right up. So uh, my apologies for tonight and my other people in the apartment, but all right. One of the wonders of Zoom is it actually quiets the blender as soon as it starts. So we get the very, at the very beginning, we get a burst, but then it, it fades into the background. Now, of course, Colin, if Colin speaks, we'll all hear it, it'll all of a sudden get loud again. But I, I like to do a little soft shoe right here. Please do feel free to send me any uh, questions by chat. I'll make sure to relay them uh, to Colin. I'm also watching the, the feed on Facebook and I see that on Facebook some people are looking for the recipes. So I will just read really quick what the link is for the recipes in case that's easier. Go to bit.ly slash all one word Colin Cooks Sauces. That's with an uppercase C for Colin, an uppercase C for Cooks, and uppercase S for sauces. And then the initials TCPL for Thomas Crane Public Library. Um, I'll go ahead and try to put that in the in the link again. But it's bit.ly slash Colin Cooks Sauces TCPL, all one word with the, with the capitals, as I explained. So, Colin, one of the questions that has come across on the chat stream is wondering how long and how high was the Vitamix on 10? So a little details just about your mixing technique. All right. Uh, I'm going to off the water here. Of course. Um, so I, I usually just run it for about two minutes on uh, high. I usually don't put it on extra high. Uh, those of you who have a Vitamix know that there's a uh, superpower feature which blows the lid off and makes uh, all the electricity fade out in the house. Uh, so I don't use that, but uh, I just run it at uh, full speed for about two minutes and that is able to break everything up okay. And then there was another question about how long it will last in the fridge. Ah, okay, very good question. So in my classes, I have what I call a four day fresh rule. So anything that you make fresh, like any sauce like this or a smoothie or anything like that, only gonna last about four days, four days in the refrigerator. Um, and you know, so, oh, let me clean it out a little bit more. This is television extra. So if you use fresh ingredients, then it should last about four days. Um, if it lasts longer than that, then you have to wonder why, because uh, you know, fresh food is only supposed to last when you prepare it for about four days or so. Um, so you put it in the refrigerator four days, you can put it in the freezer. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is pretty thick, uh, as you can see here. So if you wanted to add a little bit of water, um, you can do that. If you put this in the refrigerator overnight with the tahini, uh, it is going to firm up and uh, get thicker. So, you know, you can put the cap on the mason jar and just, you know, add some water to it, shake it up. So um, what I like to use, though, um, this is a silicone um, uh, ice cube tray. So I like to pour it into the ice cube tray. Uh, you know, like I usually make a double batch of this. Uh, I'll try not to drink the first half directly because uh, it's really good, but uh, you can pour it in the ice cube tray. Um, I like to use this uh, as opposed to the plastic ones because it's really, it's easier to get out. And also the plastic is going to uh, discolor and it's also going to take on the taste of whatever it is you put in here. Uh, put in a plastic ice cube tray. So, you know, if I don't want my ice cubes to taste like tahini or tomatoes or whatever else, then... Uh, just use the plastic ones for the ice cubes and use the silicone ones for the uh, uh, ice cube. Uh, so uh, for the uh, sauces. So I'll put it in here, I'll freeze it, and then I'll put it in a plastic bag, uh, like in a Ziploc bag, and I'll just have those cubes on hand. So, you know, I can just pull it out anytime. Uh, really easy to heat back up again. So this is my prop. 
Colin, you know? I think you're in tune. We had somebody just as you started explaining that ask if you ever freeze your sauces. That was perfect. Um, nice. There is a quick side question. People are worried about blowing out the, the, the motor on their Vitamix uh, if you're running it on high. Uh, if, or if you're keeping it on, let's see, if you run the Vitamix on 10 without putting it on high, doesn't that blow the motor sometimes? I've, I have a Vitamix myself, and I've never had a problem blowing the motor that. I did once over... I, I did actually once overheat it, and I had to wait for it to cool down. and had a reset that, that I just had to wait a little bit of time. But yeah. I don't know if you have any experience with that. Yeah. Um, if it, de it really depends on what it is that you're blending. Uh, so, you know, I've seen, I've seen Vitamix advertise that they can do nut butters and, you know, different things like that, you know, really, really thick stuff. And that's the kind of thing that will overheat it. You know, fortunately with the Vitamix, it does, uh, as you were saying, it does have that uh, heat shut off. So if it does uh, start to overheat, then it will shut down and cool off for a few minutes. So, uh, but I've had, um, I've had the same Vitamix for about 20 years. I have several now because I have to use them in classes and whatnot. But uh, you know, the one that I have has lasted for 20 years and uh, you know, I haven't been the nicest to it. So it, uh, you know, it's, it's really well built, good quality. So next recipe we're going to go with is golden cheesy sauce. Colin, if you have time, I, I don't want to take too long. I know you want to get into the next recipe, but there were a couple other questions really quick. Oh, sure. um, yeah. One question was just wondering, after you freeze your, uh, your sauces, how do you reheat them? Do you have suggestions? Do you put them in the microwave? Do you put them in a saucepan? Um, how would you recommend reheating the sauces? Yeah, either way, really. Um, if you have a microwave, uh, you know, some people are, are pretty, pretty against microwaves. Uh, so, you know, if you use a toaster oven or something like that, or, um, you know, just put it in a little saucepan on the stove and heat it up, then that's fine too. Okay. And then the other question, uh, which is actually answered in the recipes, so I would encourage people to follow the link for the, the recipes, uh, is asking what you would put this sauce on. Um, and you kind of alluded to that at the beginning as well, but it could be somebody who missed or, or joined us a little bit late. Um, there's, right. you know, all these sauces can go on so many different things, but what are your favorite pairings for this sauce? Uh, I like to put it on uh, you know, some kind of beans and brown rice and uh, some veggies like kale or uh, broccoli or, or something like that. Um, in each of the 30 recipes in sauce recipes in the book, um, I do have some uh, recommendations for each one. Uh, definitely doesn't have to be followed. You know, really, these are really meant to be utility sauces that you can put over anything and it's going to make it taste really good. Um, but um, if you wanted some suggestions, then each of the recipes does have uh, some recommendations. Awesome. Thanks, Colin. I think that's all the questions for now, but I will keep monitoring the stream. So if we have more, just let me know when you're ready for some more. Okay. So yep. uh, have it on falafel as much as possible. I, I love falafel. Can't get enough. All right. So next recipe we're going to do is called the golden cheesy sauce. Uh, so uh, this one, uh, the recipe in the book uh, uses half a cup of all-purpose flour uh, and then at the end of this you would cook the sauce uh, just for about 10 minutes and whisk it and then that really helps to thicken it up. Um, you know I really do try to eat un, uh, as unprocessed as I can for the most part. Um, I like to use whole food ingredients. It's really uh, feels a lot healthier for me to do that so um, I don't really use that much flour. Um, I don't really do much baking. Um, so a lot of times when I make this recipe, I just cut the flour out and I just use less water. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do tonight. But, uh, you know, really you can do it either way. So uh, normally the, re the recipe calls for three and a half cups of water. I'm going to put in about two cups so I don't have to use the flour. Two cups of water there and half a cup of raw cashews. So, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, this recipe is similar to a different uh, cheesy sauce that I, uh, when I first became vegan, I started using, but uh, it had a lot of butter in it and different, uh, different ingredients that I wasn't really thrilled about. Uh, I don't really use any oil in the cookbook. Pretty much all of the recipes are no oil and I'm using nuts and different things uh, to make the sauces creamy uh, because I used to think that you had to use oil for that, but you know, I found different ways and learned different ways of doing that, which you know, we'll be talking about tonight. Um, 
So the only exception to that is there are a couple of salad dressing recipes, I think, that use a tablespoon of the uh, toasted sesame oil because there's really nothing else that I found that really has that taste. So it's not um, using oil for uh, salad dressing, you know, like a half a cup of it, it's just a tablespoon, and that's just for the, the taste of it. But anyway, in this recipe, instead of oil or butter, I'm going to use uh, cashews, so it's raw uh, cashews. That's a half, a half a cup there. Fun side note, uh, raw cashews are not really raw. So it's a little trivia thing. Raw cashews are actually cooked a little bit because cashews uh, picked off of a tree are poisonous. So that's a little bit of uh, toxicity to humans. And uh, so if they cook it just for a little bit, it removes that toxicity. So raw is not really raw in that case. And I'll put in uh, two tablespoons of tamari. You'll see uh, tamari is a pretty frequent uh, ingredient in a lot of these sauce recipes of mine. I'm uh, going to put in a couple of different uh, spices. So we have a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. Uh, there's a teaspoon of onion powder here. Uh, half a teaspoon of turmeric. So the turmeric really helps to make it yellow. Also, if you uh, follow the health doctors, um, especially the vegan health doctors, you know, they are always uh, uh, cheerleaders for turmeric and all of its great health benefits. So, uh, you know, anytime I can put some turmeric in something, half a teaspoon, um, you're not really going to taste the turmeric because it does have kind of an earthy taste to it. But uh, it's enough that especially when you cook it, it's going to really activate the turmeric and make it pretty yellow. So i put that in, and then also a teaspoon of salt. Uh, I like to use Redmond Real Salt. Uh, uh, comes, it's a sea salt that's from an ancient seabed out in the Midwest. So technically it's sea salt, but it's from a very, very long time ago. So uh, it has the highest mineral concentration of any uh, salt on the market. So that's what I like to use. That's something you can get order online. You can get it at um, Whole Foods. Um, you could just use sea salt or regular salt, but that's what I prefer to use. So I combine all of that in here, put that in. So. And then the last ingredient is going to be nutritional yeast. So this one is more of a specialty ingredient, uh, nutritional yeast. Uh, it's an inactive yeast. It gives, um, it's, it's common in vegan cheese uh, sauces and uh, recipes, so it has kind of a nutty, cheesy taste to it. And uh, it's also usually fortified with a number of different vitamins, so hence the nutritional yeast part of it. Uh, so this, I, I get this at uh, Trader Joe's, they have it, uh, Whole Foods, bulk section, but since they've closed off the bulk section right now, then uh, it's a little harder to find that way, but definitely Trader Joe's has it. Um, you can order this online, sometimes I get it in like the big tub and, uh, you know, it lasts a really long time. And so I'll put that in here. There we go. And we'll in the blender for a minute. So while you blend, I'll do a little talking. There's been a couple of questions. Um, somebody may, missed, I think, the, uh, the explanation at the beginning about what kind of, uh, or how much uh, water do you use if you don't use flour uh, and you just reduce the amount of, of water um, so that you didn't have to thicken it with flour. Um, I believe right now I think you said you use two cups of water is that right? So it was two cups. Uh, there was another question uh, asking if you soaked the cashews and those were clearly not so I don't think those were soaked cashews that you just used and in a Vitamix one of the wonders of Vitamixes is, is that they can um, they can work with just raw cashew or with with you know, with unsoaked cashews. So yeah, especially where uh, cashews are really soft um, versus you know something much harder than almonds, and they are much easier to blend. Um, so, but you know if you have a regular blender or like a ninja or something, then you know it might help if you soak the cashews ahead of time. The other thing is uh, sometimes people have a sensitivity to different nuts. Uh, you know, if people are allergic, then there's nothing that you're going to be able to do for that with the nuts. Um, you don't want to have them. But uh, some people just have some indigestion or, you know, stomach sensitivity to them. 
So uh, for people who just have some insensitivity to different kinds of nuts, then if you soak them overnight, then that pulls out the phytic acid, which is what a lot of people find, you know, gives them uh, uh, issues, you know, stomach issues. So uh, that would help to eliminate that. So, all right. So I'm going to pour this in. Uh, you know, you could cook this on medium heat on the stove for about 10 minutes, um, you know, just to kind of get the raw taste out of it a little bit. I usually just uh, have it straight. Um, as you can see, it's pretty thin. So um, if you wanted to thicken it up, then uh, again, you could use some less water or you can use uh, the flour and whisk it. And that'll make it thicker. And there are a couple of questions about just how much cashews and how much uh, nutritional yeast, or nooch, as I always love to call it, were used. And I believe I just looked at your recipe, and it was a cup of nooch and a half cup of cashews, unless you did some altering there. No, oh, oh, that's right. Great. All right. And, you know, one of the nice things with the recipes is, um, you know, for so many of the recipes, one of, one of the challenges in writing the book was, you know, I know the recipes here, but... Um, you know, I hardly ever measure anything out uh, at home. So when I had to write the recipes down for the cookbook and the publisher said, hey, um, you know, we need specific measurements. Okay. So then I had to actually, you know, go through and, and measure like how much of it does, do I use? Because it's usually, you know, a handful or, you know, just a spoonful of this and that. So, you know, so many of these recipes in the book, there isn't, um, you know, the different measurements um, you can definitely play with. Uh, you know, there's nothing in this book that I would say you have to use a half a cup, and you, you know, you cannot use a quarter cup. It's all it's all variable. Uh, also, you know, where I teach a lot of these classes, you know, sometimes people are allergic to nuts or gluten or uh, you know, all kinds of different things. Uh, we all seem to be allergic to something these days. So, um, you know. One of the things that when I was writing these recipes was, you know, really trying to make them as versatile as possible. So, you know, if you have different allergies, then that's fine. There's other substitutions that you can use. Um, you know, if you follow any of the vegan or vegetarian doctors and they say, you know, you should use a lot of flax seeds every day, then uh, there's so many of these recipes you can put, you know, a tablespoon of flax seeds like in smoothies and different things and you just blend it up and you're not even going to taste it. So, um, you know, again, trying to go for the versatility. The type of salt it was that you'd like to use and somebody responded that they believe it was the Redmond real salt, but I just wanted to confirm yes. that, that was that was it. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes when I teach classes, people people ask me, you know, do you have recipes that are like, three ingredients or four ingredients and uh, you know really easy things to make and so you know my response is usually um, I am a very lazy cook I consider myself to be very lazy I like to put all the ingredients in the blender let the blender do all the work uh, but you know I don't have too many of the recipes that are just three or four ingredients um, there are some great vegan cookbooks out there that uh, are specifically for that um, different food blogs that you can follow things like that uh, so that's not really my focus uh, you know like I said I've been vegan for 25 years so uh, you know I really like uh, really rich uh, and complex uh, flavors uh, so I, I don't tend to write you know really simple recipes these next two uh, recipes that we're going to do uh, are a little, like I said, they're a little bit more complex. They have more um, ingredients to them. But uh, I always feel like, you know, if you go from four ingredients to eight ingredients, to me, it usually tastes so much better because it's so much more rich. So, uh, you know, these are going to be recipes that it's definitely worth the extra effort to, to do. So this one, we're going to put the Vitamix away for a little bit, and we're going to use a food processor for this. So in most of the sauces that I make, um, I use the blender for that. But in this one, uh, this is the perfectly pesto sauce. And uh, so this one, it works a little bit better if you use the food processor. You can put it in the blender. It's fine. You can do it that way. Um, it's just it's going to make it really smooth and creamy where uh, pesto, um, you want it to still have uh, um, some texture to it. So 
uh, I'll make it in the food processor. So you, this one is a Cuisinart. Uh, this one is kind of a, a higher end, 14 cup um, capacity. So, um, you know, I, I spent a little bit of extra money. Uh, I do use the food processor pretty regularly for desserts, especially and things like that. So I wanted something that A, I was never going to burn out just like the Vitamix and B, something that had a big capacity so that uh, you know, like if I had a little one, a tiny little food processor, you might have to like make this in batches and, you know, that's just kind of inconvenient and a pain in the neck. So perfectly pesto. Uh, so this one is going to be a combination of uh, walnuts and pine nuts. So put that in here. Go. Uh, pine nuts. Well, what I usually like to do is to toast those ahead of time, just put them in a little skillet and just kind of dry roast those. Uh, for pine nuts especially, it really brings out the flavor of, of pine nuts, so uh, that's what I prefer to do. I'm going to put in a cup and a half of fresh basil, uh, because what is pesto without basil? Sometimes I see people have recipes where they put in kale instead of basil. I, I just don't understand that. Can't have it. So, to me, there is no such thing as too much basil. Love it. I'm going to put in one chopped red pepper. Here, red bell pepper. Right. And then I put in half a cup of cilantro. So, <clears throat> uh, for those of you who don't like cilantro, then uh, you might not like this recipe, but you could, you could just take the cilantro. Not totally necessary. Cilantro makes everything better. It's so good. Um, one thing with cilantro is um, in a recipe like this, uh, where I'm not using it for garnish, but I'm actually putting the cilantro in, uh, you don't have to stem it. Uh, the stems actually are where most of the flavor of cilantro is. Uh, so again, not using it as a garnish. You don't have to uh, you know, pull all the leaves off, which are time consuming. Yeah. All right, we're going to do, uh, it's going to be a of nutritional yeast, so it helps to give it a little bit of a tang to it that you usually have with pesto. The juice of one lemon here, which I've already squeezed. And put in one clove of garlic, again, putting in two little ones because they're tiny. And then we're gonna put in one teaspoon of salt. So where this one is a bit more of a dry sauce to it, uh, this would be harder to do this in a blender. If you were going to, if you didn't have a food processor and you wanna use the blender for doing this, then um, I would say just add like a uh, half a cup or a cup of water uh, just so that for the blender, it's going to give it more to be able to blend up there. So just run this for a minute here. Colin, while you're doing that, there was one question that I went and checked your recipe, uh, which was how much nooch did you add? And I believe it was a quarter cup because uh, that's what your recipe said. And then there was another question about whether you put, you know, how do you dry roast your pine nuts? Do you put anything else in the pan when you dry roast or if it truly is just nuts in a pan over a, you know, medium or, or what, you know, walk us through your dry roasting process perhaps a little bit more for folks who haven't yep. done that before. All right, well, I'll even, I'll even show you. I have a tiny little cast iron pan that I use for dry roasting things. So. Um, I'll put the pine nuts in the pan, uh, put it on medium heat, and uh, you just want to, you need to stir them pretty constantly because you definitely don't want them to burn, and they do burn pretty quickly. So you just stir them just for a couple of minutes, uh, you know, they go from white to uh, kind of a brownish, um, you know, uh, just before they burn, you don't want to do that. All right. But no oil or anything else, I just dry roast it. So. This does help if you um, take the cover off and just scrape it down. So we're going to do that a couple of times. Right. 
And you'll see another question uh, really quick, Colin. Um, yep. As you're using the, the, the food processor there, have you ever tried doing this with just an immersion blender or some other way of chopping everything up? I mean, I'm sure old school Italian chefs used to make pesto by hand. You could probably do it with a knife and just labor for hours, but um, right. it's certainly a lot easier. Yeah, uh, definitely goes with my uh, lazy cooking, uh, letting the appliances do all the work. Uh, so an immersion blender, if you were going to do that, then you would want to add some more liquid than what I did here. Um, I do want to show you, I'll just, I just scraped it down one more time. I'm going to run it one more time, but you can, you'll be able to see that even without, um, you know, the only liquid that I put in here is the uh, lemon juice, but uh, you know, as everything blends up, you know, the basil, the um, cilantro, the red pepper, all has liquid in it. So as it blends up, then it definitely makes it creamier. So. And you'll also be able to see the red pepper, red bell pepper that was in here as well. Uh, if you really wanted to make it as green as possible, then you would use uh, the green bell pepper, but I kind of like the difference in, in color here. So uh, this is a, a great sauce. Uh, I like to put this onto, um, well, the recommendations that I put is uh, you could use whole wheat uh, orzo, uh, cannellini beans, uh, roasted zucchini, cherry, roasted cherry tomatoes, garlic, uh, baby bella mushrooms. Uh, this would be fantastic on top of that. Um, this is so good. It's one of those recipes that, you know, I might take like a spoonful out, put it on, and then a spoonful and eat it myself. <laughs> it's great. Love that. Right. So I will later and not bore everybody to death with that. And then the last one we're going to do, let me move this stuff over here. The last one we're going to do is the Jamaican jerk sauce. So this one, if you take a quick peek at the recipe, you will see there is a fair amount of ingredients in this one. This is definitely not the, the uh, three ingredients or less, but, um, you know, it has, uh, there are a number of different spices that you put together uh, for this one. With this recipe, if this is one that you really like and you end up making this or, you know, some of the other uh, recipes that have a number of different spices in it, then, um, you know, one time-saving thing is to just, um, you know, take a mason jar, um, you know, maybe a, a pint or a little half pint jar, and then just pre-measure out um, all these spices in bulk. So um, all you'd have to do is like take a tablespoon of that and scoop it in. It would make it go a lot faster. So let's see. This is, this is sort of my whole food, uh, healthy whole food take on uh, a recipe that uh, normally uh, tends to use, uh, you know, canned ingredients and uh, oil and things like that. So uh, we try to swap those out and make it a little, a uh, little bit healthier. Uh, so I'm going to put in a quarter cup of raw cashews to start here. I'm going to put in a quarter cup of water. Do a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. So you can use just regular vinegar if you wanted to for this. In most recipes um, in the book where it calls for vinegar, I do like to use the apple cider vinegar. Uh, it just has uh, more health properties than just using straight white vinegar. So, and uh, it's got a great taste. So that's why I like to use that. I'm gonna put in two, two medjool dates. So if anyone was watching the uh, smoothie class that I did last week, we talked about dates. So dates are really the only whole food sweetener that you can add. So unlike uh, sugar or agave nectar or honey or maple syrup or anything like that, um, those are all extracted and processed sweeteners, whereas the medjool dates, uh, it's a natural form of sweetener. So uh, I usually get these from Trader Joe's. Uh, <clears throat> I should like be wearing a Trader Joe's apron uh, because I mention them all the time. Uh, no, I am not paid by Trader Joe's. It would be fantastic if I was, but um, they have the medjool dates. Um, you can find dates at most supermarkets. It's just usually uh, regular supermarkets would have um, 
They're called deglet noir dates, which are smaller and they're already pitted usually. And, um, but these are larger and chewier and they're a little bit easier to put in the uh, blender. So if you don't have a Vitamix, then this might be something that you'd want to soak in hot water for like 10 or 15 minutes just to kind of soften those up. So, um, you know, one nice thing with the medjool dates is that uh, because they're a whole food sweetener, then there's all the fiber here. So the fiber hasn't been stripped and taken away. So all the healthy stuff is still in here. Um, medjool dates usually come um, with the pit in it still. So you just want to make sure that you do not put the pits in because the Vitamix will just turn it into baby pits and that is the pits. All right, so there's the dates. I'm gonna put in whole tomatoes. So this is something, you know, usually when you see these recipes online, uh, it's gonna call for a can of tomatoes, but the fresh tastes so much better. So I like to use the fresh. Um, I like to use the vine tomatoes. I don't ever buy the individual single, like beefsteak tomatoes. Uh, I really love the vine tomatoes so much better because, you know, you pick up those vine tomatoes and you smell them and that smells like a tomato where those individual beefsteak tomatoes is, I don't know what it is, like plastic or something. So, uh, nice thing with uh, Vitamix, um, you know, if you have a really good blender, um, you don't need to worry about um, taking the seeds out or the peels off of the tomatoes or anything. That would be way too much work. Let the blender do it. It just pulverizes everything, um, blends it right in. And again, you're getting the whole food product, uh, you know, as nature intended. So I'm going to put in a quarter of a cup of blackstrap molasses. So Alan, really quick before we move yeah. on, as we were talking about dates, there was just one follow up question wondering if you've ever played with freezing dates. And I don't know if that's ever something they last for a long time. I know in the fridge, I've had dates that I have forgotten about in the back of my fridge and they were perfectly fine after probably way longer than I should admit. But uh, I don't know about your experience. Yeah. Um, I've never tried freezing dates. Uh, I use them so much in different things that I make for smoothies and desserts and sauces and things that, uh, you know, I just kind of blow right through them. Uh, I don't keep them in the refrigerator though. Uh, they do, they do last for a while out on the shelf. Um, if you put them in the refrigerator, then they really tend to firm up and um, it is harder to blend them. Uh, it just uh, doesn't come out quite as smooth. So, uh, you know, if you're going to put them in the freezer, just make sure they're really well defrosted before you put it in. So, uh, so I also in the cookbook, you know, like I don't use oil in most of the recipes. Uh, I typically use, um, for sweetener, I use uh, dates. Um, I don't really call for recipes with sugar or agave or maple syrup or anything like that. There are a few recipes like this one where I use uh, blackstrap molasses. Um, molasses is a traditional um, ingredient in this recipe for jerk sauce. Um, there really isn't anything else that tastes like that, so uh, that I'm aware of anyway. Uh, Blackstrap molasses, uh, actually, of all the different sweeteners besides dates, uh, is the only other one that actually has some nutritional benefit to you. So I wouldn't say guzzle it down, uh, but, you know, in a recipe like this, I'd put it in. So uh, there's going to be a quarter of a cup of molasses. I have a few recipes in the cookbook that use some molasses. Um, just more for the flavor than anything else because it's really hard to get that flavor otherwise. All right, uh, I'm going to put in two tablespoons of tamari. Shocker, I know, to everyone. There are actually some recipes that I don't call for tamari, believe it or not. Um, just the four that I chose for tonight, they all have tamari. Um, so normally I put in a bunch of, one bunch of chopped scallions. Um, I didn't have time to run to the store and get uh, scallions, but um, as an alternative to that, um, I am going to put in one uh, shallot, uh, which is a really mild onion. So, you know, in this case, um, scallions are really mild and the shallot would be as well. So, in there. like I said, it's versatile. You can swap things out depending on what you have. I'm going to put in two cloves of garlic. I'm going to put in 
uh, one inch of fresh ginger. So uh, I always have a, a root of fresh ginger in the refrigerator, uh, but if not, you know, you can buy the root, the knob of the ginger, you can cut it up into half inch or one inch pieces, um, put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze them. Uh, ginger freezes really well. So you can do that. And then this is a point where there's a lot of uh, dry spices and ingredients past this. So we'll walk through that. So I have a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of ground black pepper here. So put that in. And then as far as the spices go, I put them all in a jar all mixed together here. So we have one teaspoon of dried thyme, uh, one teaspoon of smoked paprika. I like to use the smoked kind instead of regular because it really uh, adds a little smoky flavor to it, which is really nice. Goes well with the molasses. And I do half a teaspoon of ground chipotle pepper. So uh, that one, the chipotle pepper has a bit of heat to it. So this would be one where if you want it to be uh, spicier, then you can put in more than just a half a teaspoon. Um, you know, I'm kind of a wimp for spice. Uh, so I don't really like to put in a lot, but half a teaspoon is going to give you a little bit of heat. I think um, I'll use a full teaspoon, Colin. Thank you. What's that? I'll use a full teaspoon. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put, I put in half a teaspoon of ground allspice, a quarter, cup, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. So put all that in here. So I blend this together, and then this is one you definitely want to cook on the stove for 10 or 15 minutes over medium heat. Um, you know, we're using a lot of the raw ingredients like the tomatoes, and the cloves and uh, the, um, the garlic and the ginger, all of that is gonna have a really raw taste to it. Um, so you wanna cook it for about 10 or 15 minutes just to kind of cook that raw taste off. And, uh, and it's perfect. So I'll blend this for a minute. So while Colin does the blending, I'll go ahead. There is a, on the, the Facebook stream, uh, somebody was putting in a, a very great shout out for Good Health, the health food store we have on Hancock Street in Quincy. Uh, Colin, I don't know if you've ever been to Good Health, but it's a fabulous independent health food store um, that I think started, I don't know they started, but there's a great vitamin section and they have great organic produce. So I was really grateful to see somebody give a shout out. And if you haven't been, I'll have to come and take you on a tour. I was in there the other day. I was really impressed when everything was really locked down. It's the only um, grocery store I've been in that was um, strictly limiting the number of people using the store to just 10 people. Because um, it's a little, there's several aisles, but it, you know, you never feel like people are right on top of you, which I really appreciated. Nicest people people who work there. Not, I'm not getting paid by good health either, but uh, I just want to give them a shout out because they're really good folks. Uh, oh, I love me a, a, a small natural uh, health food store. I always love to go in one anytime I'm in the area. Uh, also, uh, you know, I give a shout out to the ethnic supermarkets, uh, you know, the Asian supermarkets, uh, the Indian ones. Uh, I love going into Indian uh uh, supermarkets they have uh, you know so much unique uh, produce and uh, you know I love to cook Indian food so I'm I'm there all the time uh, they know me and we've got uh, some awesome Asian supermarkets in, in Quincy too so yeah. uh, Cam Man and Super 88 and oh, there's a couple new ones I haven't even explored yet so yeah we've definitely got a wealth of those one other question uh, that somebody asked while you were, um, it was shortly after you added the molasses, is if you found any substitutes for molasses. And I'm not sure why somebody, I mean, it has such a distinct taste, but I don't know if you could do like a, a smoky agave or, I mean, you could do a maple syrup perhaps, but it would be sweeter and wouldn't have that, that, the, the, the tang, the kind of, the, I don't know. What do you, have you found anything good? Um, I suppose if you didn't want to do the, um, if you didn't want to do the molasses, one thing that you could try is to use um, some liquid smoke, at least. Um, if uh, you usually find that in a regular supermarket and like the condiment section. Uh, so it's basically just uh, water that's been infused with smoke. And, uh, you know, so you just put in like a, like a quarter teaspoon. It's going to give it a lot of a smoky kind of flavor. So uh, that and the ground chipotle, or sorry, yeah, the chipotle adds some smoky flavor to it, and then also uh, smoked paprika as well. So uh, I wouldn't say that that's an exact equivalent, but 
Um, you know, as far as the as far as the molasses go, it's going to give you kind of that smoky flavor. And then if you wanted to add a few more medjool dates um, in place of the sweetener of the molasses, then that would be good as well. Yep. I remember hearing once that uh, brown sugar was actually white sugar plus molasses. So I know that you don't cook with sugar, but other folks who maybe have brown sugar around would, would substitute a little bit of that um, just yep. as an extra sweetener too. But that would be introducing refined sugars, which is not something everybody wants to do. Right. Yep. So this is all ready to um, be cooked on the stove. So if you were to have that right now, then it does smell fantastic, but uh, definitely has a very uh, raw tomato taste to it. So, uh, you know, that's definitely something that I would cook. So um, the recommendations for this one, uh, you know, if you were to go to a Jamaican restaurant, then um, let's see, uh, they, use, uh, they use a lot of black beans, I believe, uh, you know, uh, different kinds of rice. And uh, let's see, veggies, uh, I think uh, green, Green bell pepper would be great. Um, if you uh, rough cut some onions, put in there as well. Um, they like to use uh, uh, plantains, a lot of plantains. So you could uh, uh, fry up some chopped plantains for that as well if you wanted to. Uh, so you could put it over some proteins too. I've had a lot of jerk, like tempeh or a jerk tofu or a mm -hmm. jerk seitan. I, I've enjoyed a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that one is all set. Um, so again, uh, if anybody was coming in late, uh, just take a second to plug uh, my book, The Healthy Vegan Cookbook. And this, there are over 200 recipes here uh, that uh, it's healthy whole food uh, eating. So I have 30 different sauce recipes. I have uh, 30 different smoothie recipes as well, which we tackled last week. Uh, four of those. And then for uh, next week, uh, we're going to be doing the third of in this series of cooking classes. Uh, next week, we're going to tackle uh, whole food healthy desserts. So uh, actually, when I submitted my um, book to the publisher, then I had the dessert section is called um, uh, healthy snacks. And so then the publisher said, where's the dessert section? You have a cookbook you need it to be in, you need to have a dessert recipe uh, section. I said, no, no, it's a healthy snacks because, you know, you can have it as a dessert or you can have it as a snack, uh, you know, in the afternoon. All of these things freeze well. They're easy to freeze. So, uh, you know, you can even uh, put some of these in the blender with some water and make a smoothie out of it. So I have it for breakfast. So, you know, again, versatility, trying to go for that. So if you join us next week, then I will be doing healthy whole food desserts as well. Awesome. Thank you, Colin. I'm really looking forward. This is, I'm, I, I left last week hungry for smoothies. Now I want some sauces. I got to pour them over everything. It sounds <laughs> so good. Um, there were, there's been a couple other questions and if people have other questions here at the end, they're certainly welcome to put them in either the Facebook chat or in the uh, YouTube chat. I'm sorry, the Zoom chat that I'm watching. Um, I put another link to the recipes that you shared with us, and I will let everybody know if they follow that link. Um, there's links both to your website, and I took the link from your website um, to the Amazon page for your book. So if people want to purchase the book, that's probably the easiest way to go about buying it right now. It is, yep. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, there was one question that came in, which was uh, somebody who joined us last week remembered that you talked about Instant Pots, uh, and you were making, I think we talked about making yogurt in your Instant Pot, and they were wondering mm -hmm. what kind of Instant Pot you have. So you want to give a little spiel about your Instant Pot experience, and, and is Instant Pot a brand? I think it is a brand, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they have different models, I assume. I don't know a bunch about Instant Pots myself. Yes. Uh, I have the uh, Instant Pot uh, Duo which is, I believe, a six quart. Uh, so they make the they make smaller ones. They make little, uh, larger eight quart sizes. Uh, but mine has the uh, one of the many buttons on the side with the presets. Uh, mine has the one that says yogurt. Uh, so if you wanted to make yogurt and a vegan yogurt in an instant pot, then um, you're going to need the one that that has that on it. That has that button. So I actually started um, with an instant pot. Uh, years ago, you know, I had, uh, you know, as I'm into cooking and I've, you know, been to a number of other cooking classes of people that other people have done. And, uh, 
you know, especially with making Indian food, which I really like to do, then um, there are a number of things that I was told in the classes, like, um, you know, like the chickpeas, for example, the uh, garbanzo beans. Um, in an Indian restaurant, um, they're always, they are sort of always so light and like, fluffy and, um, you know, great texture. And, you know, no matter how much I boil them on a stove at home, it just never has that texture. And so, uh, you know, the, the person who was teaching the class that they use a, in the restaurant, they use a pressure cooker for those. Uh, so I was afraid, you know, with the pressure cooker blowing stuff up all over my kitchen. And, you know, she told me you have to get one. And I was pretty reluctant for a while. But then when I saw the Instant Pot, and, uh, you know, saw that that was kind of gaining in popularity. It has all the presets on the sides to be able to cook different things. Uh, when you, it has the lid that you put on and it locks in place, it self locks in place. So there's really no way that you can take off the lid once the cooking is started uh, without releasing the pressure first. So you're not gonna have uh, lunch or dinner all over your ceiling like I was afraid of. Uh, so I, I really like mine. We had somebody who said, I didn't know this, I hadn't heard this before, that an Instant Pot just came out with a model that also has air frying in it. Uh, yes. I always wondered how air frying actually worked. Have you, do you have experience with air frying? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. I, yep. Um, I actually teach an air frying class, so I have... <laughs> Something to explore in the future. Right on. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, for people especially who um, want to do low oil or no oil cooking, um, but still be able to have their french fries and uh, air fryers are great. I I have no experience with the Instant Pot lid that um, becomes an air fryer. Um, you know, from what I've heard on some of the groups, I'm on some Instant Pot websites on, on Facebook, um, that uh, I think it functions pretty similarly to the other ones. Uh, so, but, you know, I like to make a number of different, like I used it for dinner tonight. I made the uh, tofu uh, for the green curry tofu and uh, so for me I will add uh, just a little bit of oil like a teaspoon of oil into a bowl and then you know coat the tofu in that and then put that in the air fryer uh, it takes about 15 minutes but it comes out really nice and crispy uh, really just like what you would get in a restaurant where they deep fry everything so it's a much much healthier way to do things and it's also it's very fast heats up very fast that sounds a lot easier. I did a whole bunch of tofu on a flat top last night, um, which is a little, like I had a ton of heat coming off of it. An air fryer would be a lot nicer, I think. Yeah, cool. yeah. And uh, also, you know, there are a couple of times that I have, uh, just for the sake of experimenting and trying, uh, try to do a little bit of deep frying uh, on the stove top. And what a pain in the neck. You know, you have to buy all this oil to put in, never mind the fact that it's super unhealthy. Um, but you know, you put all this oil in and use it once and then like, what are you supposed to do with that? Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, super inconvenient. You know, you can burn yourself really easily. And, uh, you know, I was watching a video recently on YouTube that was talking about, uh, you know, don't ever deep fry at home. And basically they say, look, you know, in a restaurant, if you're using a deep fryer in a restaurant, it's big, uses a lot of oil. And you put things in a basket and there's a lot of room for them to boil in the oil and, and get crispy. But if you're doing it on the stovetop, you're going to burn yourself and everything's just going to stick together uh, because it's in this small little plate area. And, uh, you know, basically they said, ah, just don't try to recreate it at home. It's, it's just not going to come out right. So. That, and I think but, I would weigh about 400 pounds if I kept deep frying at home because I like to deep fry too much. It would be very dangerous. Yeah. So Plus, you know, your house smells like a deep fryer. So <laughs> with in an air fryer, it doesn't do that. That's cool. Um, there's a couple of people asking where they can see last week's video. Um, so I've replied directly, but anybody who wants to go and watch it can go out to our YouTube channel, um, which is youtube.com slash Thomas Crane Public Library, um, and it's there. We're working on doing some post-production still on it, and that's taken a little bit, but they can watch the raw recording from last week. Um, and Thanks people are also asking, wondering where else you teach classes. Um, so hopefully they'll come back and see your class with us next week, but I don't know if you have any other classes you'd like to plug. Uh, let's see. I think next week, um, the one for Thomas Crane is the one that I'm doing for next week, but on my website, uh, colincooksvegan.com, 
Uh, I do have a Google calendar, which shows the different places that I'm teaching at. Uh, so if you want to catch some of the other classes that I do, uh, like for example, uh, last night for a different library, I did uh, how to make Thai curries from scratch, uh, which sort of as the name implies, it's definitely not a, uh, you know, easy for ingredient recipes or anything, but when you make, uh, I like to make Thai food, Thai curries, if you make it using uh, whole food, uh, fresh ingredients, and it tastes so much better than anything that you're going to be able to get out of a can or a jar or anything like that. So, um, you know, I just did that last night, but I do a lot of classes for the uh, different smoothies and sauces and desserts. And um, it's kind of getting a little too, too hot right now for soups, but I do a, a fresh uh, whole food soups class and uh, air fryer uh, class and uh, all kinds of different ones. So.